In this series, I'm going to start looking at the Teensy 3.6 board, starting with using the audio board to get sound in and out of the Teensy, and later using regular analog inputs and DAC outputs to see how that compares. And I will try different kinds of audio signal processing, including visual displays based on the audio, and digital processing effects like chorus, flange, reverb, delay, things like that. I'm going to start with a simple WAV file player that plays audio files back from an SD card, and then build up to bigger projects. I've upgraded my Arduino IDE to 1.8.9. Teensy wasn't showing up in the Arduino IDE, and I had to just come back over to the download page on the Teensy site. And once I got it all installed, it was fine. And I was able to again choose between the Teensy boards. I'm using 3.6. And with a Teensy board now selected in the Arduino examples, there's some Teensy things, including this audio folder here with some audio digital effects. This will be my general setup. I'm using Teensy 3.6 to take audio in, do some digital effect processing and send the audio back out. So the audio board connects around here. We'll use an I squared S audio bus back and forth, as well as an SPI bus, because I'm going to use an SD card that exists on the audio board. So I'm gonna store WAV files on the SD card and I'll be able to read those in over SPI and then do digital processing, send the audio back down with I squared S and then I can listen. So with two analog inputs, one potentiometer is going to control volume, the other is going to optionally control some digital processing effect parameters. I also have four digital inputs with push buttons. One is going to be a dedicated WAV file playback start stop, and then there's one for next and previous WAV file skip, and the final button will just be enable or disable a certain audio processing effect that I have programmed in. So when Teensy is plugged in on top of this audio board, the SD card with the WAV files will be in here, and I'm also using the line input with a signal generator to just send in a sine or sawtooth wave to help test out some of the audio effects. I'll be listening to the audio through a headphone jack, and for this video I'm going to record to a line input. So I'll be using all of these features on the audio board, and then the Teensy will do digital effects. Here's an overview of the Teensy 3.6 pins. The audio board plugs in around here, then this stuff here is available. So I'm using analog 12 and 13 for potentiometers, and then digital 30, 29, 28, 27 for push buttons. Over on the Teensy site, there's info on using the audio system design tool, and I've covered some of this in the past, where I played back WAV files from a memory location stored within the sketch. I'll link to that below, but this time I will play back from either the line input on the audio card or a WAV file on an SD card. So there's some general info over here about using the audio libraries. We're just gonna skip through all of this really and just try to do some practical testing. Really where it all begins is the audio design tool. So here on the left is all the things that you can do with audio. We start with a blank canvas and these represent basically library blocks. So the first thing I want to do is play back WAV files from an SD card. So I bring in this playback module for SD WAV files, and I can't do anything in here. I can only get audio out of here. So there's a left and right stereo audio out, and in order to actually do any playback or control of this WAV file, the info over on the right tells me things I can do. Within the sketch, I would access this, and I can start playing a file name on the SD card, I can stop it, I can check if it's playing, and things like this. It mentions that in the Arduino environment, if we go to examples audio, there's a WAV file player sketch that shows how to use this. And maybe there's some other notes here, sometimes there's more info on things to try. So basically this GUI here sets up a structure of inputs, outputs, and processing in between. Then we export it, and it's really just a header on the top of our sketch with some 
connections that show ins and outs between all these blocks that we bring in. But then we still have to actually write a sketch to actually control these things. So right now with play SD wave, let's say all I want to do is just play this to an output. So I go to the output section. If I want, I can just use a DAC off of the Teensy and just play the audio out as an analog out. But I'm not using a DAC. I'm using the audio board so I can just use this I squared S module, put it over here so I can bring in stereo left and right audio signals. And once they are in this block, I just use the headphone jack or I can use a line out and go bring it to an amplifier. So if I want to put the left of the wave file player from the SD card to the left of the output card, the right to the right, that's about as simple as it gets. So if I hit export, this is really all that's being generated out of the GUI. So the usual includes for things in the sketch, including accessing the SD card. And now for exactly what we put in the GUI, we have this SD wave player. So there's an object here and it's called play SD wave one. We could call it whatever we want. There's also this I squared S audio board reference. So it's called audio output I squared S. And here's what it's called within the sketch. We can change this to whatever we want. And then to represent the connections between, it's called a patch cord. So we can see we've wired from play SD wave zero means left channel over to the I squared S board left channel in. And another patch cord from the one, which is the right channel on this SD player, over to the right channel input on the audio card. So the patch cord connects from some output to some input, one channel per patch cord. So for stereo, it's zero and one goes to zero and one for left and right. So we would copy that into a sketch and then write some sketch code to play or stop or control otherwise. But we're not just going to play this. I also wanted to use the same audio board and use the line input with my signal generator. So on the input section, I take the I squared S board again. I bring that wherever. And now I have left and right line inputs as well as wave file stereo left and right. So if I want to be able to switch back and forth between these, I can do that within the sketch code, but I need to wire these up so they ultimately will go out to this audio board output. So I can use a mixer. And this is just a mono channel. It can take four in and one out. So I need one for left and one for right. So let's take the left audio output of the wave file, the left line in audio, and then this left channel will go to the left output on the audio board. The right output of the wave file, the right output of the line in audio, will go to the right output on the audio board. So now within the sketch, I can either turn fully on or off either of these inputs or change the volumes and mix them at a certain rate and send this stereo audio out to the output board. Now when I export this, we have the same little include header. Now we have the wave file player, the extra audio input from the audio board, two mixers, and the one audio board for output. So the more processing we do here, the more complicated this gets. And that's really where the GUI tool helps us set all this up. But we still have to write a sketch below this and control these players and mixer levels. So down here in the control section, we're using the I squared S board. And so this refers to the chip on it. So if we just bring this in here, just so it's present, there's nothing to connect in or out. It's just something we can now access in software. And while it's selected, we can see over here, there's a bunch of processing we can do. We have to enable this board in the sketch. We can set the volume on the output. There's all kinds of EQ and built-in filtering. We can use preset EQs or it's simple bass treble or a five band. And again, it refers to example sketches, either looking in the examples in the audio example folder of the Arduino environment or over here on GitHub. There's a wave file player sample sketch, 
and this plays WAV files from an SD card out to the I2S audio board. So I took that sketch and expanded it. So here's the audio board. I'm going to play back a WAV file from the SD card on this audio board and I'm going to take this function generator test audio tone as a line in, send them both through a mixer for left and right so that I can individually play back either audio source and it goes to this line out so I can record it for this video and I'm listening live on this headphone jack. In the sketch, I'm using this potentiometer as a volume control for the audio board output and I'm using three push buttons. One starts and stops WAV file playback, and the other two skip to the next or previous WAV file. So the sketch mostly looks like this. I have a little interface here so I can control things like the volume on the audio board itself. I have two input audio sources for the WAV file and line in. I take the left and right channel audio into two separate mixers. Here's how that looks in the sketch. So here's the header that gets copied in from that GUI. All the things we need to include. And since I'm using push buttons, I want to add a debouncer. Here's all the objects from the GUI. We have our WAV file player, line in source, two mixers, one for left and right. Then our output is going to go to this audio output object which is the I2S audio board. This is basically the same thing as when we're using something like a sensor that has an object. And so you would have a Dallas semiconductor thing and you would give it a creative name to use in the sketch and then you can talk to this and it goes on out to the library interface to control or read from sensors. So this is the same thing. We're talking to audio input and output interfaces on the audio board or those other routines to do all this audio processing. And of course, there's this audio connection object, which is a patch cord for each part of our audio signal chain. So basically, this is a patch cord. That's a patch cord. So these patch cord audio connections are defining what goes from in to out between all these blocks. So obviously here, there's a connection from the left channel of the wave player out to input zero of our first mixer. That would be here. And so on. And then ultimately the mixer outputs each go to an audio left and right output on the audio board. Then the usual Arduino thing. We have our potentiometers on these analog inputs, four buttons on these digital inputs, set up a push button debounce, and since we are using an audio input on the audio board, a function generator test signal, along with the WAV file player, since we're not using the microphone input, we comment that out and we declare that we will use line in when we are using the audio board as an input device. So right here, we're using something from the audio board to give us audio in. We have to tell it if it's the microphone input or line in. We will want to control the volume on the output. We need to tell it what SPI pins are connected to the audio board's SD card. We comment this out because we are not using the Teensy onboard SD card. I'm using seven WAV files. I named them 01 through 07, and I created an array of strings to hold those file names. So as we want to play back WAV files from the SD card, based on whatever wave number we are at from element zero through six, we will play back wave file one through seven. And we want to track if we are currently intending to be playing a file or not, because based on this, we will skip to the next track. We don't want to skip to the next track if we're not even in playback mode. So that's what that's for. Push buttons are gonna be an input with a pull up. We need to declare a certain amount of audio memory for audio processing. Long story short, for all the sketches I was doing so far, eight is enough, but there's a way to figure it out. We could set this to something larger like 100, and then later we can do something like somewhere in the sketch, we can print out how much maximum audio memory we have used so far since executing the sketch. I have it commented out now because I don't need it anymore, but by doing that, I found eight was more than enough for everything I was doing. So it's an empirical investigation. 
and they refer you to look at this other sketch here, memory and CPU usage, which talks about basically just that. So just like if we were using something like a temperature sensor, we talk to that device through this object we created, and for the audio board, we need to enable it, we need to tell it that as an input, we want to use the line input. We want to set its output volume halfway, and then we go and initialize the SD card. And if we have a problem, we just halt the program and give an error message. When playing back a WAV file, there's this small function that takes the name of the file we want to look for on the SD card and start playing it back. When we start playing a file, the sketch continues on with the file playing in the background. So we're not stuck here waiting. In the main loop, once I start playing a WAV file, until I press stop, after the WAV file ends, I want to automatically skip to the next one and start playing, and when I get to the end, start over at the first WAV file. So that's what this checks for. So if we are supposed to be in playback mode, and if there is not currently a WAV playing from the SD player up here, it means we were playing and the file came to a stop. So increase to the next WAV file in our list. If we get to the end, just wrap around to the first WAV file in the list and start playing that WAV file. So this will continuously keep playing WAV files until we hit stop. Also, continuously going through the loop, we monitor that potentiometer, which we're using as a volume control. If it has changed, go and change the audio board's volume. So we take in an analog reading, it goes from 0 to 1023, and we divide this by 1023, and we end up with a number from 0 to 1, which is the range min to max volume that we can set. Since our push buttons are being debounced, we go and update the status in the debouncer objects. Then, one by one, we check all the buttons that we are interested in, and I'm waiting for them to be pushed and connected to ground, so I'm checking for falling edge. That first button, which is right here, controls playback, start, and stop. So if there is a WAV file currently playing, we want to stop it. Otherwise, we do want to start playing whatever current WAV file number we were on. Then the next two buttons, when they are pressed, those are the skip track forward and reverse. So we just increase or decrease the WAV file number we are on, if we get to the end, we wrap around. And that's really all there is to this sketch. So let's upload the sketch for the WAV file player. So for this sketch, we're only using 3 and 4% of our program space and dynamic memory space. And in the serial monitor, we are waiting for a control input. So there's no playback. And right now, if I just turn on the function generator, I can control that audio but that's kind of annoying. So now the first push button controls playback start stop. So I'll start playing a track and I might need to change the debounce time and these buttons don't nicely fit in the breadboard. So I do get switch bounce still, but eventually it'll play. So I started playing back file zero one and I can stop and start from the beginning again. Or I can skip track forward. So I'm playing WAV file two, three, four, or skip backwards. And if I go all the way down and keep skipping backwards, it starts at seven. And at the same time, I can have my line in. That's the basics of getting the GUI tool and the Teensy Audio Library up and running. Next time I'll start applying some digital audio processing effects to the audio coming through the Teensy.